How many people preferred the first one? Okay, fine. Use that one if you'd like. How many people preferred the second one? Sure. In this case, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference, does it? You have to do about the same amount of work, but if you don't want to find the mean, you want to do it just directly from the numbers, you have an option for that. No problem. If this one seemed more reasonable to you because it actually uses the distance and then kind of averages them, then, averages them fine, use that one. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, you're going to have to show me at least one time how to do this by hand. So you are going to have to use the formula. Now, if you'll remember, remember the calculator stuff we did last time? Do you remember the S on there? I said, we'll get to that in just a second. Do you remember that? That's this. So your calculator will do this if you just plug the numbers in and press one variable statistics. It'll do it for you. So I need to make sure you can use the formula, but after I have you do that, you're welcome to use your calculator to calculate this very, very quickly. Are you with me on that? Because it'll give you everything. Isn't that nice? It's kind of like cheating, huh? Like legal cheating? That's awesome. Somehow it makes it slightly less fun than actually cheating, but it's still pretty cool. You still with me today? Yeah. You guys are so mellow. Whatever. Monday. All right. You know, I'd like to have you do one on your own, though, just to make sure you can. Why don't you try to find the standard deviation for the 477? Do it, one, do it the way that you, you want to. Okay, so some people use, if you raise your hand on the first one, use the first one. If you raise your hand on the second one, use the second one, and see if we get the same thing, okay? Standard deviation on 477. Your homework's coming around. Make sure that goes quickly because I have three assignments to pass back to you. So go through that kind of thing. So if you're using the first method, you've got to find the mean first. Subtract each value minus the mean, square them, add them, then divide and take a square root. Using the second method, just find x squared column first, add those two columns, and do what that formula tells you to do. Started. I think I'm going to do the second way right up here because I just feel more in a second way kind of mood today. So we're going to try that. So if I'm doing this the second way, what's the first thing I need to do? Okay. Do I need to find the mean if I'm doing the second way? No. So squaring them, I know I'm going to get 16, 49, 49. The next thing that you do is you add both those columns because you're going to be using both those sums in your formula. 
So if I add these together, I think I'm still going to get 18. Just make sure you use the right terminology here. This is the sum of x. This is not the sum of x squared. You're just adding those x terms, and you're getting 18. The next one, when we add the x squared, that's that one. That's the first one you're going to use in your formula. So when I add those together, have you done that? And sure enough, we're ready. We're ready to plug this into our second formula. So our standard deviation will have a square root. Our n is still 3. So we'll start this out with a 3 on the numerator times, it says the sum of our x squared. That in this case is 114 minus, then we're going to subtract the sum of x squared. So we'll take this column and we'll square it. After that we divide by the 3 times 2. Hopefully you see where that's coming from. Just like in the last example, the 3 is our n, the 2 is coming because we're taking n minus 1. You notice a couple things about this I hope already. Do you see the difference, the only difference between these two examples? What's the only difference between these two examples? Do you see in the, in the formula? Look at this formula, look at this formula, it's the only difference. You can say it, it's okay, you can talk. The what now? The 114 versus the 206. Do you notice how the 206 really jumped up because of that number? That number's an outlier. Do you see what's changing here is you're taking this, you're multiplying by the same thing, just that 3. It's just those outliers make that grow drastically. This is the same in this case because we're, when you add up those x's, you get the same thing. That's the same in this case. The only difference is this one has much more spread out data. That's what that's, that's doing in this particular case. That's why our standard deviation will be bigger here. Okay. How much is 3 times 114? How much? So we do our 342 minus 324. How much is that? Is that right? Cool. What now? You've got the square root of 3. Good for you. Now, we're going to find the square root of 3 on your calculator, so don't forget to take the square root. Standard deviation is not 3 here. We're going to use that number for a different thing. You take the square root of 3 and you get 1.7 something. You can put 1.7 by the rounding rule. I like to be a little bit more precise than that. I like to put two decimal places. So I'm breaking the rules, but whatever. I'm a rebel, you know. So we put 2, we're going to put 1.7. What's the next one? Three. Three. That looks a little bit better to me. Hey, is there a difference in the standard deviation? Yeah, even though we have the same mean, standard deviation is drastically different like we thought. This one is going to be bigger. This has a much bigger spread. I just mentioned it was going to be a bigger standard deviation. This one's only 1.73. This one's, this one's 7. That's significantly bigger standard deviation-wise. That means that this data is much more spread out than this data. Now, of course, we could see that just by looking at it, right? I mean, you can look at those numbers and go, 4, 7, 7, those are all pretty close. 1, 3, 14, those are pretty spread apart. Even the range would tell us that. But it doesn't give us a numerical quantity to actually act upon. It doesn't give us something we can calculate and manipulate. And this method does. So these numbers tell you not only that the data is more spread out in this case than in this case, but we'll be able to work with that later on also. How many people feel okay calculating this standard deviation? Good, all right. Very good. Now, it may come, you may come across an opportunity to find the standard deviation of a population. And if you do, there's a couple different symbols for that.
standard deviation for a population. It, you're going to notice, if you haven't noticed already, that with samples we use like lowercase English type letters. With populations, we're going to be using lowercase Greek type letters. Remember the mu thing? It's a Greek letter, and we had x bar. It was like an English letter with a bar on top. It's the same thing with the population standard deviation. Well, we have s for a sample standard deviation. S, sample standard deviation, no problem. For a population standard deviation, we're going to have a lowercase Greek version of s called lowercase sigma. That's the standard deviation. It's like you draw, a, I know it's weird, right? It's like you draw a circle and then put a line on top, like that. Or you can do like that. Can we see that? 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 Sure. Where? Sure. This is coming from, I'm doing this formula. N is 3. 3 minus 1 gives us our 2. Does that make sense? What now? No, it's not the mean. We're just taking n is n is the number of items we're adding that we're, we're manipulating. Okay, so how many items do we have up here? Yeah. So this says you take the three and then you multiply it times the three minus one. That's how we're getting the two. Okay. That's a good question. Thanks for that one. Um, any other questions? Are we okay with the canon? I mean sigma. Okay. So we get sigma. It looks really similar. Still going to have a big square root. No problem. You're still going to have a sum. You're still going to have x's because those are your data values. However, you're going to subtract. Can I subtract x bar in this case? Mm -hmm. What am I going to use instead of x bar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to square it. And lastly, here's a big difference, actually. I hope you're paying attention. I know if you got this, you're like, yeah, this is fine. But, but just watch. If you're dealing with a population, you are not going to divide by n minus 1. You're going to divide by capital N. That's the number of items in your population. Now, what this does. What this does, this kind of purposely overestimates our standard deviation, saying we have a little bit more spread than normal. Uh, because we're, we're not dealing with the population, we're dealing with the sample. Uh, we don't know, this doesn't represent perfectly our entire population. That's one reason why they do that. Here, we have our entire population, right? So this is like a legitimate average. You just divide by that number, that's what you're doing. Uh, so we don't have a minus one if you're dealing with the population, which means could you not get two different numbers depending on whether you're dealing with a sample or population for the same data sets? If I gave you these numbers, look at the board with me, please, real quick. If I gave you these numbers, 477, seven, I said, okay, that's a sample. You use that, you get 1.73. You with me? If I said, okay, 477, seven, that's a population. You use this, you're going to get something different than 1.73. It's going to be slightly lower than 1.73. Are you with me on that? So it's not going to be 1.73, not the same thing. So you really have to understand and kind of grasp that we're going to be doing a different standard deviation depending on whether we have a population or whether they have a sample. So you have to read the problem, aren't you? And kind of know what you're dealing with. Uh, it'll say on there sometime, it'll say like in a sample of blank, blank, blank. 